Look at that dark patch, that's gross. Recently, I picked up another filter from the company called GoBay, not sponsored. They're an Australian-based company who make filters and camera accessories like lens mounts. And the real perk of actually purchasing from them is every time you do, they plant trees in environmentally devastated areas, which is really neat. But that is beside the point of this video today. I want to talk about the variable ND filter option that they have versus their straight ND option, which I already had. I went ahead and I purchased a variable ND because, well, I got the new camera and I did need another ND to put on one of my cameras and then use the other set on the other one. I decided to go with variable because I thought, well, it would be an easier option. Sometimes you just don't have the time to be screwing filters on and then taking them off again when you need to change a filter. But there are actually inherent differences between a variable ND and a straight ND. A variable ND being two polarizers working against each other to create a darkening effect. It looks magical, but that's all it is. And because it is two polarizers that are working against each other, you are going to start to see effects of polarizers that you would normally get with polarizers. Variable NDs, depending on the brand and the quality, can show lots of different effects like blotchiness, cross patterns, saturation, extra saturation, color tints, but you can also get that in straight filters as well. All of those things that you see with polarizers, you're going to see with your ND filter that's variable. There's nothing wrong with using either of these filter systems if you want to go with straight NDs because you have the time to be changing them every now and then, or if you want to go with a variable ND because you don't have the time, but you're able to put up with any of the issues that you may see as a result. So let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison. I'll run through some of the results that I got. The first thing I wanted to look at is saturation and skin tone to see if there was any problems there. And when I was using the variable at one stop, you could definitely see there was more saturation happening. There was also a slight color shift into the green. You can definitely see a difference there, but it really wasn't that much. At two, three, four, five, and six stops, there's no real change. There is a slight color difference, but really not much at all. But once we got to eight stops, things got really interesting. I was still on the dial, the min and max. I was still within that range and I was getting something that I didn't expect to get within that range. And that was quite a big dark patch in the middle of my shot. That's not meant to happen. That is something that does happen outside the range that's given, that's measured on your filter, but Within that range, everything should be usable, and I was experiencing a big dark patch right in the middle. That makes that shot completely unusable. And with the straight NDs at three and six stops, I didn't really notice much difference. There still was a green hue. I think that's just a thing with Gobe filters. There is a slight green hue. That is an effect that you see with a lot of filters, even professional ones you see in the industry, not just these screw-on filters. So it's not really a bother to me. If I know that I'm using an ND, I know that I have to correct for whatever color shift it gives me. I mean, ideally the color shift wouldn't be there, but sometimes it just is. There didn't seem to be much change in saturation either on the straight NDs. They seem to be pretty good. All right, so here's the test where you can really see what the polarizers are doing. With the variable filter at one stop, there is a distinct blotch on the left side of the image in the sky. It's very dark in this one patch. Now that does disappear as we go to two and three stops. These two stops are usable. You can see the patch kind of moving across. It's still there, but it's kind of more evened out a bit. At three stops, the saturation in the sky is also a little bit unnatural, but uh, that's what you get when you're using polarizer. So as long as you can live with that sort of look, then that's okay. At least it's not blotchy. Four, five, and six stops, all of those were great. At seven stops, things started to get dark in the middle of the image, but once I adjusted for compensating for the stop, that did kind of even itself out a bit, but it is concerning that that is still there. It's underlying and it's still there. And then at eight stops, it becomes kind of unusable again. There is that big black patch in the middle. I've come to the conclusion that this filter probably can't be used for its full eight stops. I guess you'd have to cut it off at seven, maybe even six, but the middle stops tend to be the most usable. And then with the straight NDs at three stops, it seemed to be pretty good. There was no real color change. It was a little bit, but still fixable. And at six stops, it was slightly more saturated. There is a little bit of a cooling effect again, but that's still fixable. So in conclusion, my main concern is the fact that the variable ND isn't usable for the whole range that's marked out on the filter itself. So in between the minimum and maximum, you can't really use it uh, at one stop and you can't use it at sometimes seven 
most of the time eight. I find that quite frustrating. I'm kind of disappointed in that, to be honest. Gobe is a great brand, don't get me wrong, and this isn't meant to be a video slamming Gobe, but for the versatility of having a variable ND filter, I think personally, I would be better off just purchasing a straight set of NDs, another straight set of NDs, and then maybe getting those zoom magnetic filters. If you've seen them, they're amazing. So if I could get a set of those, then that would be much better than just having a variable ND to start off with. But then again, that's more money. So ultimately, both of these filters are usable. You do just have to think about which one is going to work right for you and whether you can put up with the effects that a variable ND can potentially give you depending on how you're using it. The convenience, of variable NDs versus the inconvenience of straight NDs, but straight NDs being much cleaner and much better, and variable NDs having a lot more problems. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did enjoy it, please remember to give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of my face and learn a little bit more about filmmaking in the process, remember to subscribe and I'll see you later.